Hello everyone, welcome to this video. My name is Abushad. In this video, we are going to see how we can deploy a custom Docker image as code in Kubernetes and how to create a load balancer in AWS to access the services. When I say uh, a load balancer in AWS, we are only creating a load balancer in uh, Kubernetes and this automatically creates a load balancer in AWS and will provide a link to access the services inside the Kubernetes. All right, I've created a blog and I will put the link in the description. Uh, we will see uh, what are the commands we are going to execute and let's see things in action. Let's just go and access the terminal, connect to the client machine. In my previous video, I have shown you how we can create a Docker custom image and then access it and then uh, containerize the image and then tag it and then push it to the Docker Hub. So that Docker Hub uh, image we are going to use to deploy the pod. And we are going to use this image inside the pod. And I'm going to show you a easy method uh, to access the pod by using curl command, using an open image. So this is one way of accessing it. Uh, just as a first uh, level of troubleshooting, you can use this method. But if you want to access it uh, from outside, then uh, the load balancer option is one option, or you can create a application load balancer. Depends upon your choice and the preference or the policy of your company or how we can set how you want to set up your application in AWS. All right. Uh, now I am accessing the uh, terminal. This is the client machine. Uh, if you watched my previous video, you will uh, able to understand what is the client machine and what are the tools we have installed, etc. So please go and watch my earlier videos. I will put a link of the EC2 instance which I have created for, as a client machine to connect to the Kubernetes and uh, install Docker, etc. So I just uh, put that link where I'm uh, configuring the EC2 instance and install AWS CLI as well as kubectl. All right, let's get started now. Let's go and check the blog. Let's uh, see how we can create a YAML file. Uh, uh, Kubernetes gives you a nice uh, template. When you use minus minus dry, dry run minus o YAML, uh, it will give you a nice template in YAML. And you can edit that file if you want. Uh, and then uh, change it according to your need. But this template will be very useful for you. This is an imperative method uh, to create a YAML file. Or else you can create a YAML file itself and then I mean uh, you can create a YAML code from the scratch using any ID of your choice. Uh, I most of the time uses this imperative method. And let's see how uh, easy it is to create a YAML file. So. I'm going in this command. I'm going to uh, create a pod with nginx web, uh, web app name. The name of the pod will be nginx web app, and the image is our Docker Hub image. First part of the Docker Hub image should contain your Docker Hub ID and then the image name. And minus minus dry run minus o yaml. It will generate a yaml file. This is the template you will get. If you want to change it, you can change it. Uh, this particular template is uh, nice and it is uh, it can be used directly. So I'm not going to change anything. I'm just redirecting this to a file to use again um, when I'm configuring the objects in Kubernetes. All right, uh, now let's go back and see the web app dot yaml file. I'll just show. This is the same thing which is which was output. It is just showing API version kind, etc. If you want to change anything, name. If you want to change, you can change it. If you want to change the labels, you can change it. All right. Uh, the most important thing is the image, which is the Docker Hub image. All right. Let's go and create this kubectl apply minus f web app dot yaml. All right kubectl get all minus o wide. Yeah, it's uh, it's running. That means it fetched the uh, Docker image successfully and it is able to run. 
and this is the IP address the port contains. All right. Now let's go and create a Ubuntu port. So you will see how uh, you can use an Ubuntu port in parallel with this port, and then how you can access the HTML web page using that port. All right. Uh, let's go back and let's do this command. I'll quickly tell you what this command does. It again run kubectl run Ubuntu. That means Ubuntu is the port name. You can give any name, and the image we are going to use is Ubuntu, which is which will be uh, downloaded from the Docker Hub, and minus minus sleep 600. So that means it will run a command called sleep for 600 seconds, so that you get this Ubuntu port running for 600 seconds. So if this if any port does not have a service running then it will crash and then uh, Kubernetes will try to restart it and then again it will crash and so on. So if you want to run any command inside that port, you have to uh, run some command so that it keeps on running. So this is one uh, workaround to keep this port running. Right. Now let's run this. So port is created. Let's see whether this is running. Yeah, this is running. So it has got a IP as well. So let's go and execute uh, a bash bin bash command and then go inside the Ubuntu port. So this is the command kubectl exec minus it that is the terminal interactive terminal of the port Ubuntu and we uh, want it to run a bin bash for us so that we, we get a bash uh, when we execute this command. All right, so we are now inside the Ubuntu port. So if you use curl command now, it's not working. So because command not found, command is not there. So you can uh, do a um, uh, apt get update first. <clears throat> that is done. Now you do an apt get install curl. I want to install this. All right, now let's see uh, curl HTTP colon slash slash. And let's go back and see the IP address of our port, Nginx port. Let's see if uh, in AT port we were able to access the HTML web page. All right, so that means our uh, port is working fine, our configuration was fine, and our image was fine. So we were able to access it. So this is one uh, workaround method you can call it to access any uh, services using a port uh, in the same range of that port which is installed. All right, or deployed you can say. Okay, so now we will exit this. And let's go back to the blog and let's now create a load balancer. And we are going to expose that uh, load balancer. I mean, we create a load balancer in the Kubernetes as a service. And this load balancer will automatically create a AWS load balancer. And then we will be able to access the HTML web page in NGINX from outside. So uh, let's see how we can do that. Let's copy paste this command and let's see the output. So basically it says expose port that creates a, a service. So this is one imperative uh, command which is very handy. You can use it to create a service template. So when you say expose port that will automatically get the labels and create the service with uh, the same label. So you don't have to go and set the label or select it, whatever in the service. So it get attached to that particular port. So expose port will automatically take the label from the port and then uh, from which port nginx web app and port is 80 target port is also 80 and dry run minus oyaml this will create a nice template yeah this is the template and let's redirect this to a file web services yaml let's see web app services stock okay so now this is a template it has given us this is, uh, using an imperative command now we are going to uh, use uh, we edit this file using vi and then we need to change this 
uh, template to create a uh, load balancer, a load balancer service. Okay, let's go and edit it. Web services YAML. So basically, you need to give a line here with type load balancer with L and B capital. Okay, this is the format you need to provide. Let's create. Okay, all right. Just uh, I want to change the service name. So by default, it takes the name uh, same as the port name. So we can change it if you want, or you can keep it as it is. Just change. We need to change the name. Okay, CPL apply minus f web app services yaml okay so kubectl get all yeah so load balancer is created and you can see this long list of dns long dns name that means uh, this is able to this particular kubernetes load balancer service is able to create a load balancer in aws that's why it is giving you a dns name so when you see this that means uh, you have done everything right and uh, AWS started uh, the the you are you are able to create an AWS load balancer all right now go to the EC2 and go down and see the load balancer area load balancers here you will see now it's getting created now all right so this is getting created now uh, you can see here it is it has the load balancer service which we created in kubernetes is creating a load balancer in aws nice so you see here is the status is zero one instances you need to wait for some time because it takes a little uh, a bit of time so to create this load balancer okay we will wait Okay, meanwhile, I'll just show you how you can verify if our service uh, created, um, I mean, how the service, uh, whether the service which we have created is correct or not. You can just describe the SVC uh, and see the endpoint here. See, uh, the endpoint is showing as 172.31.89.60 colon 80. So we need to verify the IP of the port. If the IP of the port is correct, yeah, the Nginx web app port IP is this one. So if this is correct, then that means you have configured the service and attached the correct port. All right, so this should work now. All right, now let's go back and see whether load balancer has been created or not okay yeah fine so one of one instance in service and if you go to the tags you will see the service name here see default nginx web app service so our service name is nginx web app service so it detected that tag that means it is able to integrate this load balancer is able to integrate with our kubernetes load balancer service and it should most probably work now all right now let's copy this dns name and see if we are able to access our html web all right so it's working fine that means all our configuration is fine our image is fine what we have downloaded the docker custom image is fine we have configured it everything is working fine all right so that's the end of this video thank you for watching